So what is love? Well, love is effectively doing the good of another. So whenever you do good for another person, it is considered as love. Okay. So I use the same explanation for chastity. So what is love? Love is, it is not an emotion, it is not a feeling, it is a decision. It is an act that you are doing good for the other person. In the same way, uh, when you when you think about abortion, a baby in the mother's womb, what good it is doing for that baby when you feel the child? It is not love, it is violence. So the baby may have any issues. So taking care of the child, helping the child, treating the child is an act of love. Doing good for the child. Okay, killing the child is never an act of love. And it's violence, it is selfishness. Okay? Now, the first man, the man, now we'll come into the, enter into the uh, uh, scientific aspects. So if I, anybody can answer, answer me, um, uh, maybe Jeffrey, when does life begin? Ah, good, seven robots, thanks. Okay, life begins at the moment of conception. Okay, what is conception? When a sperm fuses with the egg. Okay, when the sexual intercourse happens between a husband and a wife, when the sperm fuses the egg, at that moment, single cell zygote is formed, and that is the moment of conception. Okay, the baby is formed at the moment of conception. That is scientific. So, till uh, the church used to say, theologically, life begins at conception. Recently, many years ago, science have proved that life begins. No, no. Sorry, no. The church used to say that. The single cell zygote is a human being. Okay. But uh, recently, the science also proved that the zygote, the single cell zygote, is a human person, a human being. Okay. That's one of the biggest arguments of abortion that zygote is not a human being. So, God said, let us make man in our own image and like that. Uh, in, the, in the context of this God of God, whom do you look like? According to the word of God, we look like. Uh, the image of God. Ah, yes. Yes, thank you, Patricia. Yes. Second, God of God, you look like God. So, God said, God has made all of us in the image and likeness of Him. I look like God. You look like God. All of us look like God. What is, what about a baby in the mother's home? That baby also looks like God. What if the baby is deformed or handicapped? That baby also looks like God. There is no difference. All, every child is made in the image and likeness of God. Okay? Whatever the deformed or handicapped, whatever the issue the baby has. And so, when a, baby, when, a, when a child is made in the image and likeness of God, none of us have any right to abort or kill that child. Okay? God said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Okay? Uh, if God is telling a family, a family, a husband and a wife, family, that you should multiply. Means, multiplication means having the number of kids God is telling. So, how many number of kids a family should have to complete this word of God of multiplication? If a family has to multiply, how many number of kids minimum they should have? Eight. Eight. How did you come to that number? <laughs> uh, replacing, their, uh -huh. uh, replacing their parents' generation. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Find any other answer? Any other mathematical answer? <laughs> Into two. Into one. <laughs> Four. Four. Okay. Who said that? Or Benjamin, okay, Benjamin, correct. That's four. Husband, wife, two. The multiplication means two into two. Two into two is four. Okay. <laughs> so you should have minimum four number of four babies to fulfill multiplication. Okay, I am happy that I reached that level recently. Thanks be to God. Okay. Okay. So brother, brother, I have a doubt. So uh, yes. So we should all have four kids. Sorry? We should all have four kids. Ideally. Ideally. <laughs> ideally. Yes, ideally. You should have... No, no. You should not have four kids. You should at least... At least have four kids. More than that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like so, me, you know? Eight. At least. So, 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 so yeah, what if no. I cannot provide for them or anything like that? Uh, I was about to tell that. Uh, uh, so, church says that 
judge says to follow responsible parenthood responsible parenthood means you should have uh, the you should have the capacity to give the basic necessities to your children basic education basic food love time you know all this you should have basic or you should give all the basic necessities to your kids how many kids you are able to provide these basic necessities so many kids you can have understood right and the truth is the truth is from my own experience i will tell you uh, when you believe in the lord and have another kid you know the blessings will be multifold no you get you see more blessings so if you ask me um, when i have my third kid okay i was i financially secure no i was not the according to indian law we don't have insurance for the third kid so i, I had uh, we had to pay out of uh, my own pocket i didn't have money left money but still i i so i believe i could have managed somehow we we believe trust in the lord and we went ahead once i had my third kid the lord bless our finances much uh, maybe 100 fold you know So, you know, so I have a fourth kid, you know. So uh, I, I now, if I, I can afford to have many more kids, but my wife's health is not that great, so it's, it depends on that. But I'm, what I'm, what I'm telling you from my experiences, that every child, Lord has blessed our family and finances a lot. That's my personal experience. Okay. Anyway, so when does this uh, is Mercedes? I'm sorry, I don't know if she can hear. When does uh, baby's heart starts beating? Okay, everybody. Now, uh, Patricia, if you remember, twenty-one days. Ah, yes. Who said that? Benjamin. Who said? Hello. Uh, who said? Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. You are right. So, eighteen. The science says. Science says eighteen to twenty-one days. A baby's heart starts beating from the moment of conception. Okay. So that means usually a mother comes to know that she is pregnant. Uh, when uh, she reaches her menstrual cycle, which is usually one month, even before a mother comes to know that she is pregnant, a baby's heart has already started beating. Okay, Jeremy one five says, "Before I formed you, though I knew you, each life is planned according to a perfect plan of God, never accidental. Every life is a you plan uniquely. Okay, God has made us unique. So one of the scientific evidence of our uniqueness is our DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Each of us have a unique DNA." Which nobody ever had in the world, and nobody will ever have in the world. All of us have unique DNA strands in our body, scientifically. Now, coming to the medical aspects, the Hippocratic oath was the oath usually taken by doctors. Uh, this was the uh, I will give no deadly medicine to anyone who asks or nor suggested such counsel, nor in the like manner will give to woman a pestle to to produce abortion. This is not I don't know. This is recently taken. Earlier it was like that. that Yeah, the Hippocratic oath says, "I will not give any medicine so somebody can die. Neither I will uh, do any medication or contraceptive so that a woman can do abortion." Now, this is Geneva Declaration. Geneva Declaration, uh, Declaration, uh, which is uh, uh, for the medical medical science. In 1948, the Declaration said, "I will maintain utmost respect for human life from the time of conception." That's how the Declaration works. In 1994. It changed to, I will maintain utmost respect for the human life from its beginning. There's a big change. So when you tell conception, it is very concrete. That comes at the time life begins. When the word changed from conception to beginning, the beginning is very relative now. Some people can say life begins at conception. Some people say life begins at the baby is born. Some people say at the third month life begins. So. Now they change to to beginning so that abortion can be allowed. Okay. Another one says the International Court of Medical Ethics says a doctor must always bear in mind the obligation of preserving a human life from conception. That is 1949. Later they removed the word conception. A doctor must always bear in mind the obligation of preserving human life. So all these changes are done to allow abortion. But earlier they were all promoting life and protecting life. Now coming to India, Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act says that um, uh, there is a recent amendment which says a baby can be aborted till 24 weeks of gestation. That means up to six months of pregnancy, baby can be killed. 
in india around 20 million uh, abortions happen uh, every year 20 million is like 2 crores okay uh, different methods of abortion taking pills very common method uh, up to 3 months usually pills are taken some after three months, you know, a baby is killed via something called DNC, dilatation proteins. A baby is cut into pieces by the abortionist or a gynecologist. Baby is cut into pieces using a clam like this. First, they will cut the leg, then they cut the hand, cut the body. Finally, they will crush the head. A very violent way of killing. Or another way is called suction. So, a high pressure vacuum pump will be inserted into the uterus and they so now we are looking at the different uh, questions of abortion. Also, one, one of the question is uh, deformed or handicapped. Okay, so people say that the baby is anomalous. And the doctor says in the fifth month, in fifth month scan, there is some scan called anomaly scan. Okay, this scan is particularly done to see whether baby has an anomaly or need to be aborted. So when you say, when people say, uh, doctor says, oh, baby is anomalous or some genetical issue or health issue, the doctor say about the child. And this is a very cruel thing to do. If I ask you that uh, one of you, you know, you're all healthy today, and if some disease or accident happens, you know, you uh, have some anomaly you now. Uh, you know, you have known maybe your, your, uh, your hands are gone or legs are gone or some issue. Uh, now, now, any the doctor will say, no, you know, it to kill you. Nobody can say, right? So, how different is a baby? So, when we have an issue, we should, the act of love is to treat us, to save us or help us. Okay, it is not right to kill us. The same way, a baby in the mother's womb deserves to be treated, loved and cared for, not murdered. Now, the next question is, um, what if the mother is uh, AIDS positive? Uh, there are medical techniques available to deliver the baby uh, without having AIDS if the woman informs the doctor well in advance. Okay. This is a very important question. Right. A woman is raped and she is pregnant. And um, uh, why why we should not abort the child? This is a very, very uh, tricky and a very serious question. Any any uh, abortion debate you go, the first question people ask is this. How cruel it is uh, to say that, you know, you should not abort a child uh, when through rape. It is a cruelty on the mother. Okay, or the woman who has been raped. So, in case you encounter a question like that, how you should handle it is, first ask the person, okay, I understand your concern on the rape. Let's keep, a, keep rape aside for five minutes. We will discuss on it, no problem. Keep it aside. Do you agree that abortion is wrong in all other aspects other than rape? First you ask that question. Because normally what people do, they take the emotional aspect of rape and try to hide under it to promote abortion. So we need to be sensitive to take rape aside. Ask them, do you agree abortion is wrong in all other situations apart from rape? Okay. Then only start the discussion. If they're telling, no, they don't agree, then why are you taking about rape? Let's discuss about other topics. If they tell yes, they agree that abortion is wrong in all other aspects, okay, fine. Now let's discuss about rape. Now, in reality, uh, so, so the number of the program is not correct. In reality, the chance of a lady getting pregnant via rape is 1 in 2,000. 1 in 2,000. Very, very, very rare chance. 99% of abortions happen outside of rape. So it's, it's illogical to justify 99% of abortion with 1% possibility. Okay, now why we should uh, not kill a child during rape? Okay, fine. We sympathize with the woman who's been raped. Very sad to hear. Now, rape is already caused a lot of stress and trauma to the woman. Doing an abortion is going to add her more trauma, trauma and stress, not reduce it. Second, doing an abortion, will it unpregnant the woman? Make the woman not pregnant? No, she is already pregnant. It cannot be changed. The only question is, is she, are we going to, is she going to be the mother of a delivered child? Or is she going to be the mother of an aborted child? That's the only question here. In a second, and a third, I'll ask you. If you, one of you, I'm just taking you, I don't know, maybe Benjamin, I'm taking Benjamin's name. Benjamin, I know Benjamin is a nice person. I tell Benjamin, I know your father is a good man. Okay, but for example, I'm telling Benjamin, you consider that your father is bad. 
I'm telling Benjamin because your father is bad. I have decided to kill you. Is there any logical, correct argument? No, it's wrong. I, I, there's no need for me to kill Benjamin because his father is bad. I did something wrong. In case of a rape, are we not telling the same thing? Because the father did something wrong, we have to kill the child. Okay, if you think about human rights, we have we will take human rights, uh, your right to liberty means freedom and right to property. If I give you two rights, you will always say that right to liberty is more important because only if you have right to liberty, there's a question of right to property. Now, if I give you right to liberty and right to life, which one is more important? You will always say that right to life is more important because if there is no right to life, there is no question of right to liberty. So we agree that the basic human right is right to life. So in such a case, if there is a conflict of interest between mother's right to liberty upon versus a baby's right to life, which is more important, baby's right to life is always very important. Okay, the, the child in the womb is an innocent human being. Just because the father did something wrong, there is absolutely no need to kill the child. What we suggest is, we don't tell the lady you take care of the baby, continue the pregnancy, deliver the child, give the baby for adoption. And you go on with your life. So in that way, you don't have to impact your health as well as the baby's health. Another thing, abortion is not an easy procedure. Abortion has its own medical, psychological and spiritual consequences. Abortion in, can kill a woman in its attempt. Abortion can cause cancer in the future. Abortion can cause infertility issues, bleeding issues. People who go through abortion have higher cancer, chances of different cancer in the future. People who do abortion go through something called post-abortion syndrome. They feel anger, frustration, suicidal thoughts, depression. Okay. Spiritual consequences. The church says it is a mortal sin. The person doing an abortion is excommunicated out of the church. Until the person does confession, they are not. So now the next question is mother or child. Um, yeah. Sorry. Mother or child. Uh, which means if the mother's life is in threat. So uh, sometimes what can happen is if my mother's life is in danger because of pregnancy, the doctors will die, the mother will die, so kill the child. Okay. Now what does the judge teach here? Ideally, if the mother dies, the baby will also die naturally with the mother. Without the mother, the baby cannot survive. There, there are very rare medical situations where mother's life can be in danger during pregnancy. One such case is ectopic pregnancy or double pregnancy. Instead of the baby being implanted into the mother's uterus, the baby gets implanted in the fallopian tube of the mother. The baby gets implanted in the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube, the baby will grow in the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube will rupture, killing the mother and killing the child. What does the church say? The church says, in any situation where mother's life is in danger, the doctor can do any treatment to save the mother. Now, what is abortion? Abortion is the intention to kill a child and the act directly kills the child. But when a doctor tries to save the mother, his intention is not to kill the child. And the act should not kill the child. For example, in the ectopic pregnancy, the doctor has the right to cut the fallopian tube of the mother to save the mother. The baby is inside the fallopian tube. So, you are not directly killing the child. If we had a medical technology available, to save a baby in fallopian tube, we should do that. Since there is no medical technology available today, once the fallopian tube is cut, after some time, automatically the baby will die. That is not considered as well. Okay, this is uh, Saint Gianna Parata Mona on your left side, uh, who is a saint, a prolific saint. In her fourth pregnancy, she had uh, breast cancer. She didn't take treatment because it may impact the child. After the fourth child was born, she died because of cancer. The fourth child is still alive today as a prolific doctor. So, uh, Saint Pope, Pope John Paul II venerated her as a saint. Right side, you have Sophia Tracy, a Jesus Youth active member. She, in her eighth pregnancy, she had cancer. She didn't take treatment and she delivered the eighth child and she died after that. She sacrificed her life for an eighth child. So, it's a very interesting question which uh, one of the reporters chose you now when somebody interviewed them. They asked uh, Sophia Chechi, Sophia Chechi, don't you think by not taking treatment, no, you are risking the life of your seven kids that they don't have you to take care of them. And is it not better to take the treatment and take the risk of losing this child, but you, are, you can live to take care of all your other seven kids? 
So Swamika Chaiji answered this. No, she said, there will be somebody to take care of my seven kids, my husband or family. But the one child in my womb, nobody can save that child. Only I can save. And she decided to sacrifice her life to save her child. Okay. okay. Now, uh, said that eye pills, you know, people take eye pills thinking that it is emergency contraceptive pill. Many a times, eye pill acts as an abortificant. People don't know that. Eye pill can act as abortificant. It does not do contraception. What is contraception? Preventing pregnancy. Abortion is killing a child. Many a times, I will kill a child, a child who is already born, not one is not born outside, but zygote formed and implanted in the uterus. I will kill that child many a time. Nobody knows whether I will is doing abortion or contraception. And as for WHO, I will is considered as number one carcinogen, cancer causing. Everyone who takes an I will regularly has higher chance of getting cancer in the future. Abortion increases the chance of ovarian cancer, breast cancer, and uterus cancer. These are the real Productive organs, breast, ovary, uterus. Science says that for the good health of breast, ovary, and uterus, it is good for a woman to frequently deliver. With every delivery, chances of breast cancer, uterus cancer, and ovarian cancer are reduced by some percentage. A mother Teresa, if we can accept that a mother can kill her own child, how can we tell people not to kill one another? True, right? If we if can tell a mother to kill her own child in the womb, how can we tell people not to kill each other? Gandhiji, it seems to be clear as daylight that abortion would be a crime. If you look at this, you will Abraham Lincoln, Vito, and Empty Vasudevan, and all these are very famous people whose mothers actually tried to abort them, but they didn't succeed. If they would have succeeded, the world would have lost some great leaders today. If you, I know you all know about Cristiano Ronaldo, the greatest football, one of the greatest footballers of the world. Cristiano Ronaldo's mother tried to abort him multiple times. She didn't succeed. Think her mother would have, his mother would have succeeded in an abortion. The world would have lost a great footballer today. The church sees this as unholy trinity: contraception, sterilization, abortion. Now, this a few of some. I'm going to solve the arguments, choice arguments. Okay, when does life begin? It always begins with birth. No. So, so, if somebody tries to come and argue with you, telling a baby is a pump of cells, you know, what is the difference between a human person and an animal? A human being has a body, mind, and a soul. Right? A soul. That makes a person, personhood, dignified person. Animals just don't have soul. So, that everybody agrees. Okay, we are human beings with the soul. Okay. When the soul comes, you consider that person as a human being, a human person, human person. When somebody comes to argue with you, no, a baby in the womb is a clump of cells, and you ask them, okay, fine. Tell me, when, according to you, uh, is it right to kill a human person? They will say, no, definitely no, you cannot kill a human person. Again, fine. So, according to you, uh, tell, ask them, according to you, when is a baby becoming a human person? Ask this question. If they say, at birth, at birth, at least nine months, then ask them back. Okay, fine. What about a baby born premature at seventh month? Is that baby a human person? Then they'll say, oh, yes, that baby is. Okay. Then, then, then uh, they will, uh, they, the, the, the point is, they can never answer that question. Because nobody knows scientifically when a soul enters. But church says a soul enters the human body at the moment of conception. Okay. So no, they can never answer that question when somebody becomes a person. Because a person, the soul enters at the moment of conception, single cell cycle. So that they, they will never answer that question. Okay. Now, some people say, my body, my right. Okay, my, it's a child is a part of my body, it is my right to abort. Look at this, a woman's body, and if anything in my body should have my DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, a baby in the mother's womb will never have mother's DNA. A baby in the mother's womb will, will always have a new DNA, which means scientifically proved that a baby is not a part of mother's body. Baby is a separate new human being, separate body. Okay. So, on my body, my right argument is too tight. Wrong. It is because it should be actually my, you know, uh, our body, my choice. 
It is not my body, my choice. It should be our body, our body. But I am taking the choice. The proper choice people say it is a choice. It is my choice what I should do with my body. So if I tell a proper person, um, oh, I have proper choice. Okay, I have decided to beat you. What do you think? They will say no, wrong. You should not do that. Why you should not do that? If they say abortion is my body, my choice. Then I can say I am using my body to beat you. It is my choice. So we should tell them. It is you can do anything with your choice to impact your body. No problem. But your choice ends when you are impacting another person's body. When I decide to beat you, though it is my choice, I am impacting your body, which is wrong. The same way, when somebody says to do abortion, though they are. It is their choice. They are actually harming another person's body, so it cannot be right. They are not. There is no. So you, if because of it, the baby does not feel pain, it is okay to kill. Science says that a baby can feel pain from um, eight weeks onwards. No, even if they consider the, they are trying to do an abortion before the baby feels pain. Now the counter argument should be: you ask that person, okay, you, I am going to give you anesthesia. Okay, anesthesia means sorry, you said that. Okay, I'm I'm going to do I'm going to uh, give you anesthesia, which means uh, you you will not feel your unconscious. When you're unconscious, you will not feel pain. So can I kill you? No. So if they say pain is a defining factor to kill a baby, then we can kill that person when that person is unconscious. That should also be right. So that's not true. Now some people say, <coughs> um, this, "This person is called Bernard Nathanson. He is the one who introduced abortion in the U.S. Has done like something more than thirty-five thousand or I don't know, so many hundreds of abortions he has done. He one day when he was doing abortion after the ultrasound scan was introduced, when he was doing abortion, he found that when he was trying to do an abortion, the baby is trying to move away." In the ultrasound scan, he found the baby trying to avoid the equipment, trying to kill the child. This baby is moving away. Then he realized, "Oh my God, this is a real human being, and I'm killing a child, a live child." And he changed that out. The ultrasound scan changed him to be a pro-lifer. He changed the from a the head of abortion. He converted to become a pro-lifer that day, and he is an active. I don't know whether he's still alive, but he many years he worked as a pro-lifer. And we call it a silent scream. When an abortion is done, a baby cries in the other inside with nobody to hear. No, no sound will come on. So we call it a silent scream. Then some people say the argument of viability. A baby cannot live by himself or herself, so baby is not viable. So it can be killed, or baby can be killed. So we can ask that person, a newborn baby who is born, delivered, two days old, one week old, or one year old, is that baby viable? Can that baby live by himself or herself? No. It needs care, attention. What about us? We are grown, thirty years, twenty years. Can we live by ourselves? No, we are social human beings. We need help of others to live. So viability is not a factor to define. Okay. There's some people say it's a woman's right. So what about unborn's right? So who 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 will speak for the baby's right? Okay. So, about some people say abortion makes woman's life better. It's a lie. It's a big lie. So, abortion will. There is a study done by the Finn Finland. Finnish study in 1998-1994. They said this is one of the very interesting studies. Women who abort are 3.5 times more likely to die within the year that woman have than that in the same year than the woman who have normal deaths. They did include deaths from suicide and accidents. So they say a woman who does an abortion is three and three point five times more likely to die in the same year. So mostly by suicide. Okay, mental illness is a contradiction to abortion, and depression and psychiatric admissions are higher after abortion than normal birth. Depression and admissions, depression and psychiatric admissions are higher for women who does an abortion. So there is a acknowledged link between abortion of first pregnancy and breast cancer. Okay, abortion increases the risk of subsequent pelvic infection and infertility. So, 
abortion impacts a woman psychologically, emotionally, physically. Post-abortion syndrome, it's very common. Abortion does not end the problems. It often just exchange, exchanges one set of the another. Francis Schaeffer. Okay. Now, coming to um, IVF. Since I'm taking abortion, I don't take IVF also. IVF is in vitro fertilization. Um, yeah, it is in vitro fertilization. You all know, you all know IVF. So according to the church teaching, a child is not a right of the parent. A child is a gift of God. What IVF does? The, they take a bunch of they they take a sperm of the husband, egg of the mother. They fuse inside a laboratory. Multiple zygotes are formed. They take one or two zygotes, implant to the mother's uterus. The remaining zygotes are peeled, freezed, or given for medical research. The church says the sperm should be of the father, egg should be of the mother, fusion should happen through the congenital act of love, sexual intercourse and marriage, and the mother should carry the baby. In IVF, the sperm could be of the father or of a donor, egg could be of the mother or a donor, or both could be donors. Fertilization never happens via sexual intercourse, via a scientist in the laboratory, and uh, the mother may, may carry the child, may not carry the child if it is surrogate mother. Most importantly, IVF does multiple abortions. So when people argue with you for abort, uh, IVF, uh, tell them that, are you telling it is an act of love for you to kill your own many babies to have one or two children of yours? It is an act of violence. It's, act of, it's murder. So IVF is immoral and they're mortals in the Catholic Church. Okay? So I, I know you all of you know, I am I'm open to any questions. If you may have, you can put in the chat. You can ask me directly. Uh, here, uh, please feel free to. Thank you so much, Dino uh, It was very informative, and I'm sure that many of us have at least some questions. Okay, this person is asking. Uh, uh, you spoke about IPL, so it is a kind of contraception. So, what about the other kinds of contraception that doesn't allow the zygote to be formed? Like if you use something before that. Ah, okay, 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 fine. Okay, so I was uh, thinking that uh, you know, we are aware of the basic uh, teachings of the church. Okay, <laughs> so so all of you who are new to ProLife, uh, so I'm going to put an atom, atom bomb in your mind that the church says any usage of contraceptive is a mortal sin. Any usage of contraceptive is a mortal sin. Okay, so because that was not a topic in the session, I didn't cover. Maybe another day, I can take uh, another session detail about that. It's a big topic altogether. Can you speak on that topic on another day and also uh, on surrogacy? On yeah, yeah, surrogacy is uh, very simple. It's like uh, renting a womb. That means uh, 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 via IVF, you know, it can happen that some celebrities will suddenly go on a vacation to abroad. Okay. Uh, and uh, they go for two-week vacation. When they come back, they'll come back with the baby. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so probably they have planned uh, surrogate mother somewhere. They given the zygote and So, it's like you, uh, you are not the biological mother. You are via IVF. You are making a zygote, and you are actually implanting the zygote into the uterus of another woman whom you have hired as a mother. So that woman will carry the baby nine months. Once the baby is delivered, the woman will hand over the baby to the real biological parents. So it's like renting, you're renting a womb, like you're renting a house or a car, you rent a womb to carry your baby. That is surrogacy. Child, the church is against that. So contraception, yeah. So so um, um uh, so the church says any usage of contraceptive, be it the condoms, eye pills, uh sterile properties, uh, environment devices, or even forget all that. Even just you know, having an intercourse, withdrawing the pennies to spill the sperm outside the vagina is a contraception in itself. Okay, the church considered as a mortal sin. So that's so. Um, and I know it's a little tough to digest. And you know, this is one of the toughest topics uh, to even convince prolific people. <laughs> so because of, uh, I have I have one more question. Um, uh, okay, I'm keeping it confidential. Who asked me? Come here. What is the church teaching about premarital sex? Okay, that's again another topic in itself. Okay, so uh, church says that church says that sexuality is a gift, a blessing to be used inside of marriage, only inside of marriage, not before, not outside. 
the judge says any usage of sexual intimacy okay it, it may not be even intercourse it, it can be even uh, you know uh, and having sexual intimacy not even you know without having intercourse it can be you know uh, having a kissing or a touching or cuddling or you know anything which is sexually arousing is wrong to be done and having a premarital sex before marriage obviously sex before marriage is a mortal sin to be done before marriage so in problem i can tell you the logical aspects if i may give you an example very simple example okay so so sabin as i was saying which food do you like the most okay um beef beef <laughs> let's consider that your mother is preferring the best beef okay you enjoy it a lot and after some time you got married okay now your wife is preparing a beef her beef is definitely is not great like your mother okay now what will happen you will you will compare your mother's beef curry to your wife's beef curry yeah. right and you will feel say my mother's <laughs> okay this is the same issue with sex also if we have boyfriends or girlfriends before marriage it can happen that i can tell my wife is not good my second girlfriend she was very hot she was interesting yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yes. To change the <laughs> okay. So there are many other reasons of uh, hormone impact, oxytocin bonding impact, scientific issues and all. I can take that in another class. Okay, so it's another topic in itself. But to answer the question, it it is a mortal sin to have sex before marriage, and it has serious psychological and emotional consequences on your life, which can happen in your current and future. So people, all of you. and uh, i just take about two questions two questions okay uh, if you want to think about sex before marriage two questions what are you trying to achieve out of it okay did you get it when you tell what are you trying to achieve people normally don't say just pleasure pleasure is just passing they are telling peace joy contentment satisfaction right okay and did you get it and the answer i can guarantee you will be always no after a point of time it will be so what are you trying to get out of it what are you trying to achieve out of it did you get it and i am sure it will be sex out before marriage after some point of time this answer will become 100% no that means you didn't get what you wanted to achieve thank you for watching Thank mm-hmm. you.